This video explains how to calculate the mean value of vectors and data frame columns using the mean function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So in the first example of this video, I will show you how to calculate the mean value of a vector object. And for this, we first need to create a vector object, as you can see in line two of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right that a new vector is appearing, which is called x1. And we can print this vector to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see that our vector contains eight different numeric values. Now, if we want to calculate the mean value of this vector, then we can apply the mean function, as you can see in line five of the code. And within the mean function, we simply need to specify the name of the vector object of which we want to calculate the mean. So in this case, our vector is called x1. So if you run line five of the code, you can see at the bottom that the value 4.625 is returned. And this value is actually the mean value of our vector object. So in this first example, I have explained how to apply the mean function to a vector object. However, in this first example, our vector did not contain any NA values, or in other words, missing values. And this is what I want to show you in the second example, starting in line seven of the code. So in this line of code, I'm creating another vector object, which is called x2. So if you run this line of code, this vector is appearing at the top right. And if you print this vector to the bottom, you can see that this vector contains exactly the same values as our previous vector x1. However, this vector also contains an NA value. So if we apply the mean function to this vector object, you can see at the bottom that an A is returned. And the reason for that is that the mean function cannot handle an A values by default. So if an A value appears in your data, the output will also be an A. However, fortunately, the mean function provides the an A dot remove argument, as you can see in line 12 of the code. And if we specify this argument to be equal to true, the mean value of our vector is returned again. So in this case, the NA value was removed from our data. And for that reason, the result is exactly the same as in the first example. Another option that can be used for when using the mean function is the trim argument, as you can see in line 14 of the code. And the trim argument trims all values below or above a certain threshold. So if you run line 14 of the code, our mean value is slightly higher because we have trimmed the lowest and the highest values in our vector object. So in the previous examples of this tutorial, I have explained how to handle vector objects when calculating the mean value. However, it's also possible to calculate the mean value of data frame columns. And this is what I want to show you in the next examples of this tutorial, starting in line 16 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm using the data function to import the iris data set to our current R session. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right that a new data set is appearing, which is called iris. And we can print the first six rows of this data frame to the bottom by running line 17 of the code. And then you can see that our data set contains five columns and the species column is used as a group indicator. And this column contains three different species groups of our data. So let's assume that we want to calculate the mean value of the entire column sepal length. Then we can apply the code that you can see in line 19. And in this line of code, I'm applying the mean function once again. However, this time I'm specifying within the mean function that I want to extract the column sepal length from our data set iris. And for this, I'm using the dollar operator. So if you run line 19 of the code, you can see that another output is returned at the bottom. And this output shows the mean value of the column sepal length. So in this case, the mean value is 5.843. Now we can also use the mean function to calculate the mean value by group in a data frame. So as I have mentioned before, the species column will be used as a group indicator. And to calculate the mean by group, we also need to use the aggregate function, as you can see in lines 21 to 23. Within the aggregate function, we are specifying the name of the column for which we want to calculate the mean. So in this case, we are calculating the mean for the column sepal width. 
Then we are specifying the species column as group indicator and we are specifying the mean function as the function that should be used to calculate our output. So if you run lines 21 to 23 of the code, you can see that another output is returned and this output shows the mean value for the three species groups, Setosa, Versicolor and Virginica. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.